The word of the Lord came to me through Terry Tickle, and he says, Rick, as your ministry base increases, or in other words, as your church is growing, you have to increase your prayer base. And he compared it to a Christmas tree. You know, when you get a Christmas tree, you know what happens. You, 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 You get the little stand, and you put up the tree, and it holds it. And he talked about how that he had gotten a Christmas tree, and it was much bigger because they had moved. You know what I'm talking about? And they had the same little stand. And what happened? It fell over. You know, think about that. Very prophetic. If we're going to do the work of the Lord and we're going to increase, guess what? Our prayer base has got to increase. Can someone say amen? amen. So we need, we need to, to think about that and pray about that. And uh, uh, like I said, prayer is, is a heart. Uh, I'm very heart driven when it comes to prayer. Um, Let's bow our heads together. Lord God, You have a high calling for us. A high calling of intercession, of standing in the gap. And Lord, if we don't pray, who will? So tonight, we just pray for Your anointing. We pray for Your presence uh, to be upon us. And Lord, as I teach tonight, I pray, Lord, that ears will be open to hear what You're saying to us. Lord, You are searching for people who are willing to step into the breach and become bridges for others that they can turn back to God. Lord, You have placed dynamite in our hands and the opportunity to step into this breach for others by our prayers. So Lord God, we ask that You give us a passion and a heart to intercede. In the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, You and I have one of the highest callings that there is. The moment that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you were able to enter in to God's presence. Woo! Think about that. You were able to enter in The Bible says in Hebrews that not through the blood of goats or rams nor the ashes of a red heifer, but that is to say through the blood of Jesus Christ that now you and I are able to enter in to the very throne room of God. Now I want you to think about that because you and I have become priests. That's what that means. That we are a royal priesthood a holy nation, a peculiar people, and you fit the bill, folks. Come on, (laughs) y'all. Peculiar. And so because we are a part of the priesthood of believers, you compare that to the Old Testament dealing with the tabernacle and how that the priest would make their way into the holy place and minister on behalf of the others who could not enter in. Now think about that. To intercede and to pray and stand in the gap. They were the go-between, if you will. Now, with that, Jesus has become our high priest. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, making intercession. Interceding. He he is there interceding for us. I've got news for you. I, I don't want anybody else praying for me. He does a pretty good job. And I want you to pray. I'm, I'm just saying that. You know, I, 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 come on. <laughs> uh, but the issue is Jesus is interceding, and what we do is we go to Jesus because He's the high priest, because He's the one that is in the Holy of Holies with God, our Heavenly Father. Now, I want you to think about the privilege that we have when we pray. I began to develop a passion for praying when. I was in Garlstadt, Germany, uh, stationed there, uh, and I went to an all African American church. Can y'all imagine that? Yeah, you can. <laughs> it was great. It was fun. I had a I had a good time, and I really got close to Bobby and B. Favors that were there. That were the pastors, and you know, I was just a a, a normal Methodist boy. You know, I had received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the issue. <laughs> was I'd never been in an environment that was spirit-filled, okay? 
So I didn't really know how to pray. I just knew that God had filled me with His presence. I actually received my prayer language or speaking in tongues, if you will. I received that and spoke in tongues for almost two months and didn't even know what I was doing. And what happened was uh, 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 my sister and her best friend were at the house and, and as they were there, I was trying to explain to them this experience that I'd had with God. And as I was explaining it to them, this experience, all of a sudden the Spirit of God came on me and knocked me out. Well, they started crying. Oh, Lord, what's happened? You know, and, and, and there I was on the floor. You know, just, just going for it. Y'all. <laughs> and I didn't even know, I didn't have any definition for this because I'd always been raised in, in the Methodist church. Well, what happened was she ended up calling her grandmother and her grandmother comes, Bettina's grandmother comes to the house and she says, Rick, she says, you've been baptized in the Spirit. I said, I have, what's that? I had no clue what it was. Everybody say hallelujah. Uh, you know, sometimes God can use us even when we don't even know. But what happened was that she began to explain to me, well, let me go back to my other story. I cl- chased that rabbit to get to this one, all right? So I had no frame of reference really of of what it meant to intercede. And we would have three and four days where we would sometimes get a pass or they'd give us time off. And Bobby and B would say, we want you to come over to our house, Rick. We're going to have prayer this whole weekend. Now I thought, you know, okay, I can do this. So I got over to their house and uh, uh, we're there. They had a prayer room that was set up in their basement. It was kind of neat. And they would go in two hours each. Two hours they went in. Uh, one person, and the next two hours somebody else was going. Then it came my turn. I got in there for five minutes. I'm like, Lord, I prayed for everything. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. You know what I'm talking about? I was like, hey, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I prayed all this time. And, and now I've got, Lord, an hour and 55 minutes to go. Well, that went on for four days. Every four hours, I had to go back in and give them two. (laughs) It was a challenge, I'm telling you. And so uh, when all that took place, what happened? God began to develop a passion in my own heart just simply to spend time with Him. And while I was in that prayer room, I'll never forget it. Because all of a sudden, I was no longer there. But I found myself in a city in America. I can even tell you what it looked like. I was actually in a city and I was literally hovering in a sense over a girl that was in Detroit. An African American girl. And I come out busting out of the room, oh my gosh! And what had happened, God had literally taken me and I could see this girl and she had run away from home. All that I knew is that this young girl was in trouble and I felt like she had run away from home. I mean, it was being revealed to me even while I was there. And I came back and the thing of it was, was this. I was able to look at a sign. I was able to see the the, the, the area that she was. And it was B's niece that had run away from home, and God had given me the area where she was, and they were able to go and pick her up. Is anybody here? Come on, somebody do something. And so I was able to literally stand in that place, if you will, of intercession. That mediator. And God was was able to use me as I was standing in the gap. Now that was one of my first deep intercessions. And I've been in intercession in times where uh, literally God would show me a person that was going to show up in the church. I I saw this one guy. He had two earrings and bald headed and he had tattoos on him. And and some of y'all would say, I can't believe that person came to church. But that's the kind of person I want in church. You know? But what happened was, he, I saw him, physically saw him, he showed up in church, and I began to describe him to the, the people that I was praying with. This is who I saw, this is, and, and we need to look for him because he's going to come here, and when he comes here, he's going to give his life to Christ. And you know what happened? He came, and he gave his life to Christ. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let me say something, that is the privilege of us being 
the priest that God has called us to be. Standing in the gap and making a difference. Some of us have old grandmothers who would stay up all night and burn, quote, the midnight oil. That would pray and seek God. Seek His, seek His hand, seek His voice. Change destinies. I know my Pentecostal grandmother, she was Baptist, and then she had terminal cancer and God healed her and she became Pentecostal when Sister Lewis came over and they prayed over and bobby pins started flying. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> As they were shouting and, and praising God. But Sister Lewis came over and prayed for my grandmother and I'll never forget it because my parents ended up going to the Bahamas and my grandmother said, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll come and watch the kids. And you know, it was like having a babysitter. I was mean. And I was within walking distance from school. And what happened was uh, uh, my grandmother stood out on the porch for two hours because I got distracted by a, a dirt pile where they were building a house. And they had Tonka trucks. You know, there was a demon that got on me and its name was Tonka. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> you say, come out. He says, no, I want to play. Play, I want to play. <laughs> Everybody say, I love Pastor Rick. Y'all getting some funny looks right now. Amen? Now, the reason I do that is because I get funny looks and that, that assures me, okay? <laughs> but my grandmother got a hold of me when I got home and that Pentecostal hairdo was up there and she had her blue polyester dress on I'll never forget it and she grabbed a hold of my hand and she says I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus I you know what's happening right now deep intercession Woo! help me <laughs> all right Y'all ready for this? All right. Everybody say, God is good. <laughs> How is God's will to be done upon the earth if we as His priests are not praying? How is God's will to be done upon the earth if we are not praying? When we pray, heaven moves. Hmm. The church and who we are, and when we are at prayer, it is heaven's outlet. It's when we become plugged in. And the reason that we have powerless churches is because we have not gotten plugged in to heaven. The disciples were so moved by Jesus Christ and His prayer life, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And the reason they did that is because they saw heaven coming to earth. They saw Jesus who was plugged in. <laughs> and you and I need to learn how to become plugged in. Hmm. Everybody say, good. Have your Bibles turned to 1 Peter with me. Chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, looking at verse 9. Now, I like teaching, so this is more like what I'm going to be doing on Sunday nights. Is everybody enjoying this so far? Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Look what it says here. You should know this. You are a chosen race, a royal race priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. <laughs> Isn't that good? I could just stop right there. Whew. That you, what? May proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Now think about that. As the priest of God, you've been called out of darkness and you've been called into the light. The light is where the presence of God is. The priest as they would minister before the Lord, the Arionic priesthood. 
What they would do, they would have certain duties that they did every single day where they would go in and they would take care of the menorah. They would take care, if you will, the lamp, golden lampstand that produced the light. Now, what I like about that, if you study that, you, you find out that on each side of the lampstand there was basically nine fruit or things that were there, knobs, that represented nine and nine. So you got literally nine gifts of the Spirit and nine fruits of the Spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. That produced light. And, and as priests, they would go and they would stand in front of this. Now, I want to say this. When you and I are the priesthood of all believers and we're doing as God has called us to do, we begin to move and activate in the fruits as well as the gifts of the Spirit, and that is the light to this world. It is where we have been in God's presence and we begin to reflect that. Amen? Let me go a little bit further than that. Moses, up on the mountain, in the presence of God, when he came down, the glory of the Lord was upon him. Someone say hallelujah. His face shone so much that people couldn't stand it. Let's put a veil on. Let me tell you, that's the problem with many of us today. Even when we have the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit activated in our life, we want to hide those things. I say, no way, Jose. It's time for us to let the light shine in the darkness. Look what it says here. He's called you out of darkness into what? Into marvelous light. Let's keep going here. Revelation 1.6. Go there with me. Hmm. I just want you to understand who you are as an intercessor, okay? That's, that's all I'm trying to do tonight. Revelation 1.6 says this. If you don't know where that is, I need to pray for you. Amen? <laughs> he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to His God and Father. To Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. Now let's explain that a little bit. Because you are priest in the kingdom. A kingdom is anything that the, the king is ruling over. The king's domain. That's where we get the word kingdom. And when we simply say, God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it means that you and I are literally praying that God would allow His kingdom to come. His domain. Now there's things that happen in His domain. So as we become intercessors, priests, and we're praying, we are literally seeing the king's domain come to earth. Wow. Many of us right now feel that we are seated right here at East Stone Gap United Methodist Church. Oh, bless God, I like this place. and i got news for you, I'm not here. I'm sorry, oh, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am seated in heavenly realms. Jesus took it upon Himself. He said, the things that I see the Father do, that's what I do. Even when He talked to Nicodemus, study this out with me. When He talked with Nicodemus, in that process, He was talking about how to live in the Spirit, but He talks about Himself literally being with the Father. Are y'all with me? Now how could He be with the Father when He was standing upon the earth? I can tell you, because He was living in the King's domain, and what that meant was everywhere that Jesus went, there was an open heaven. Amen. Now get where I'm going with this, folks. You're talking about Jesus, the Son of God. And now we have become sons and daughters of God. We've become priests of God. Representing God upon this earth. Can I keep going here? Jesus, at the moment of His baptism, the Bible says that the heavens opened. 
And it was from that moment that there was an open heaven that followed Jesus everywhere He went. Satan didn't like it. And so when the heavens opened, what he began to do is try to distract and try to do whatever he could to keep that heaven closed and keep Jesus distracted. We read where he was tempted and it simply says that the enemy left him for a season. Y'all with me? But we find that Jesus literally from that moment began to walk and live underneath an open heaven. Let me say this tonight. If, if you understand who you are in Christ as a priest, you must understand that you and I, because of the blood that's been applied to our lives, that we are the sons and daughters of God. And with us, God is pleased. The heavens are open. And when we pray, there is not one thing that can hinder it. Hallelujah. Y'all, y'all aren't here. Come on, y'all. You and I must understand that we are living in the King's domain. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Understand that. And as you intercede and you pray, and you have that understanding that you're a son and a daughter and a priest, that you can crawl up in your daddy's lap and he hears you. I have three beautiful daughters. Love them. But they know how to get their daddy. Amen? <laughs> daddy. And they call, oh, I just love you. <laughs> what do you want, baby? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how it works. And as a daddy, they call me Poppy. That's, that's my name, all right? Poppy. Poppy. It touches me. Or do you want anything you want? I'm going to try to do whatever I can to bless them, to do what I can, to minister to them. Y'all with me? Within means. <laughs> Think about that. Us being children, sons, daughters, priests, means that you and I can crawl up in Abba's lap. And anything we ask shall be done. Someone say Hallelujah. So we see this. He's made us. Everybody say made us. Amen. I like it. You can't do it your own. He's done it. It's all His work. Amen? Made us. To be a kingdom priest to His God and Father. Look at Revelation 5 as you're there. Revelation 5.10. Everybody say this is good. When you're there, say Amen. If you're not, say, oh me. Mm. <laughs> Revelation 5.10. Look what it says. And thou hast made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God. Listen. And they will reign upon the earth. Hmm. I want y'all to understand that there's royalty flowing through your veins. Isn't that good? Doesn't that make you feel better about your prayer life already? Doesn't that encourage you to understand who you are? I want you to know, it took me forever to understand that I was a child of God. I rededicated my dedicator out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Anytime there was an altar call, I was there. But you know, sometimes I still do that. I'll go up, oh God, please forgive me. If I, you know, just to make sure. Come on. <laughs> but you know, let's just, don't look at me like you're holy. Come on, y'all. <laughs> but look what it says. He's made, he's made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God, 
and they shall reign. Everybody say reign. Now, I want to help you out a little bit because most of us have, or some of us have been baptized in the Spirit and we get to the end of Mark. I'm, I'm trying to help you out here a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'll be preaching on some of this sometimes. So if you hear it again, go hallelujah. Amen. That's good because it's always good because it's the Word. Amen. Amen. Go to Mark and we get there and it talks about they shall speak in tongues, they shall cast out demons, you know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And we get to that part where it talks about serpents. Oh, help us, Lord. What's that talking about? Or if they drink anything? Y'all ready to get some snakes up in here? I want to help you out a little bit. Everybody say hallelujah. In the Old Testament, any time a king would go in and take over a kingdom, he would take the reigning king of that kingdom, he would place his foot upon their neck in front of all their peers and crush his neck and take over the kingdom. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That puts a little dip, bit different perspective going on there. Amen. Amen. Now if we think about that, we shall reign upon the earth, I want you to understand what I'm getting ready to say. You and I have authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. What does that mean? That means that you and I can put our, head, our, our foot upon the devil's neck. But why? Because royal blood is flowing through us. We live and reign with Him! Come on, y'all. Woo, that's good preaching right there. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, y'all. Think about it. Think about it. That's the availability that you and I have as children of the Most High God. And we get up in church <laughs> and sing songs about suffering. Y'all with me? Barely making it. It's all going to be better when we get to heaven. It seems like the song on the last, the last verse, every song that we sing, it's always got to have something about heaven in it because we're going to get there someday. Hallelujah. And it's all going to be over. Come on, say, man, with me? Come on, y'all. Am I right? Well, Brother Rick, now I like some of them songs. I'm not, I'm not saying they're all bad. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm simply saying is that you and I are kings and priests of the Most High God. Jesus is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And you and I rule and reign with Him. We have authority and this is the one thing the enemy does not want us to know because when you and I get into our prayer closets and we move into that place of deep intercession, mm, hell's got to move. And you and I have the authority to put our foot upon his silly neck and go come on y'all we have authority to move the mountains we have the authority to speak to the fig tree oh Jesus is the only one that did that no he's given us authority to pray to change the atmosphere to see his kingdom come to see his will be done on as it is in what's in heaven can you tell me a little bit about it who wants to talk about it what's in heaven come on some, just say some things Jesus that's a good one come on so that means Jesus is going to come here come on y'all now what else music that means music can what else what praise praise is in heaven what's that mean praise is here what else Angels in heaven, that means angels can come here. What else? Healing, come on. Well, there's no sickness in heaven, so what's that mean? There can be no sickness on here when we take authority over it. Anyone else? Huh? Streets of gold. Why can't we have a little bit of gold around here? Come on, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He meets all of our needs. What? According to His? 
Come on. You see what I'm saying? So the blessings of heaven come to earth. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look to your neighbor and say, that's so good, I'm about ready to take a bite out of this chair. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't do it. I'm waiting. Come on. <laughs> Dave, quit biting that chair back there. <laughs> Turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The reason I'm doing this is I, I want you to see that the Bible is it, 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 it's holistic. You can look in different Scriptures and it's still revealing the same thing, but it's going a little bit deeper, okay? Romans 5.17, if you dare say hallelujah. Look at this. For if by the transgressions of the one, death reigned through the one, talking about Adam, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Woo! Will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Through one Adam, there was death and destruction. But through the second Adam, Jesus Christ, now you and I reign. Listen. Through life. Uh. Some of us just need to sit here for a minute and just soak that in. We reign through life. Well, Pastor Rick, I'm just suffering, just praying that I'll just make it through. You know, I just can't wait to get on that other shore where life will just be so much better. Now I want to say this. I didn't say there's not going to be suffering in your life. I didn't say that there's not going to be trials in your life. I'm saying there's one who will go with you through the trials, through the suffering, and life will be better simply because He is our intercessor and He knows how to take good care of His children. Is anybody here? Somebody do something. Come on, y'all. Give Him praise. Some of y'all just potty caking. Some of y'all ain't doing nothing. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Right here in this row. Right here. Right here. Amen. So, listen, listen to what it says. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace. Everybody say abundance of grace. Oh my gosh. That's over. Over and above. Abundance of grace. Isn't that beautiful? And it goes on to say, and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the One, Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? Just chew on that, just a second. Chew, chew, chew. Mm -mm. Everybody say, mm mm, good. Mm. Wow. Just meditate on that. Hmm. Now turn to First Peter chapter two. Here we go. First <laughs> Peter chapter two, verse five. I like hearing those Bibles turning. Amen. First Peter chapter two. If you don't know where First Peter is, it's before Second Peter. All right. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. Listen. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. One of the reasons that we've been called to be a priesthood is because we have to offer up sacrifices. Now I want to say this. When your prayer life increases, it's a sacrifice. The enemy will do everything that he possibly can to distract us 
And so, when we begin to pray and begin to intercede the way that God is calling us to as priests, it means that it's something that should be done daily. Now, I, I, I want to say something to you because this is just good. Y'all ready? At the time of Jesus, we have the parable of the Good Samaritan. You remember it? Where you had priests who passed by the side, way to the other side, to, to not touch him because they didn't know if he was alive. They thought that he might be dead. In Jesus' day and time, the Levitical priesthood, or those who were associated with it, there were so many individuals who could minister in the temple that you may only serve one time in your life. So they didn't want to miss their opportunity. Y'all getting this? So they were walking on the other side, but Jesus, you know, he talked about this Samaritan who ended up ministering. Y'all with me? Now, I want you to think about that. One opportunity in your entire life to go into the presence of God. I have to say this. I might have done the exact same thing. Mm. But the good news is this. As we have an opportunity every single moment of every single day. Woo! Help me, Jesus. Come on, y'all. We have the opportunity to, to get into His presence anytime we want. Simply through the blood of Jesus and speaking the name of Jesus, all of a sudden, all of heaven has got to move because there's an open heaven. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. And we can go in anytime we want. So what's your problem? What's up? Well, I got to take care of my grandkids. I got dirty laundry. Amen. I got to go play me some golf. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. If you and I could just get a heart for God, hell will move and heaven will be open. Intercession. Intercession. Standing in the gap. Being in the center of God's will. Someone say hallelujah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's think about this for a minute because as we... I'm going to go on. Uh, as, as we deal with intercession and getting in God's presence, what it does is it simply opens us up to Him. People say, well, I don't understand why I'm going through these things in life or I don't understand you know, why God is not answering or God's not doing. And we spend... 20 minutes in prayer a week. I, we need to begin to develop a passion for the throne room. Oh. 
There's nothing like the presence of God. There's so much. Trials of life become so dim to get lost in his presence. Oh. To hear from heaven. Knowing that we're children of God. <sighs> I long for Him. There's nothing else that satisfies. Bread. Someone say hallelujah. There's a holy moment going on right now, y'all. As I've been in God's presence, I've seen things that you can't imagine. I've heard angels sing. I've heard angels' wings. I've heard trumpets blow. And when you get in tune with heaven, there's nothing that is impossible. Woo! Is anybody here tonight? You are a royal priesthood. You are a nation that God has put upon this earth that is holy. And what makes you holy is the fact that you have been in His presence. Woo! It's not the clothes you wear or the bobby pins in your hair. Come on, somebody say amen. It's the heart that demonstrates the power and the glory of God. Mm. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm a royal priesthood. And tell them, you sure forget, you fit that peculiar part. Go ahead and do that. So what does that mean? That means that you're different than the rest of the world. As a nation, you and I stand out. So, that is your role as an intercessor. Amen? I felt led to close a little bit different tonight, but that's okay. It is because that's where we're going to do it. <laughs> Amen? I felt led uh, as I was praying today and seeking God about tonight and listening that I want us to close a little bit different. I realize that there's some special needs. As a matter of fact, there's someone here who has a problem with your shoulder and tonight God's going to heal you. Amen? Um, receive that today. And so just right now, even where you are, you can just begin to receive that. Amen? But I want us to very quietly, find two other people. You, that means it's a total of three, okay? I want us to get in groups of three. So, and just find your own place. 
wherever that is. And I want us to kind of spread out and get in groups of three, okay? And kind of go with someone that you're not around. No husbands and wives. Come on, y'all. Because we want to hear from heaven. Is that okay? Get, a, get, get with someone else just a little bit different. And uh, so, one, two, three, go. Go. <laughs>